easily a hundred times cooler than Armageddon. I swear to God. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at protoform misconceptions. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, protoforms are just a skeletal form of every Cybertronian. This is not to be confused with a Cybertronian's developed structure, which I'll get into later. Protoforms are capable of transforming into a transition form, a armored, cometary shape capable of interstellar travel. Upon landing on a new world and transforming back into a protoform, the transformer immediately begins transcanning for a new alternate form to adopt. Now, there are two main sets of protoforms, Autobot and Decepticon protoforms with the ones on the Decepticon side having several variants which I'll get into later. Now, not all Transformers start off as protoforms. Some were born as hatchlings while others were pre-built into their developed structures. Since a Transformer can either be born as we saw with the hatchlings, or built as Lockdown suggested. So let's start off with being born. We know Transformers can be born for four reasons. Those being Optimus telling us that the Allspark created the Cybertronian race, only that it holds the power to create worlds and fill them with life. That is how our race was born. Lockdown's line in Age of Extinction. Where do you think you came from? You think you were born? <laughs> no, you were built. Hound and Jetfire both saying that they had parents. Any longer, they snagged our location. You're a hell of a father, Kate, don't forget it. Oh, my dad never called me. I have issues of my own, but it started with my mother. My ancestors have been here for centuries. My father, while he was a wheel, the first wheel. Do you know what he transformed into? No. Nothing! And the hatchlings in Revenge of the Fallen. Now, hatchlings are basically baby Cybertronians, and the eggs they're encased in is an artificial womb, called a Energon womb, that gives the hatchlings regular doses of Energon to survive. This can all be backed up by TF Wiki's statement here. With that in mind, part of the Cybertronian race was born by the Allspark, alongside a legitimate and artificial method of reproduction. This artificial way likely came into existence during the war used by both factions, since homegrown soldiers would be more efficient than breeding. Unlike breeding, however, Cybertronians born the artificial way would not gain a developed structure until they would scan a vehicle. A developed structure, or DS, is the final development stage after protoform. It's basically the final look a Transformer will have until they scan a new vehicle. This stage grants the Transformer a Cybertronian alt mode. For example, when Sentinel Prime was revived, we clearly see him have Cybertronian tires on his legs and upper body, with a windshield on his chest. 2007 Megatron also was in his DS stage, with him having a Cybertronian vehicle mode. Soundwave in Revenge of the Fallen as well with his Cybertronian satellite form, along with Shockwave since we clearly see his purple U and unique body structure, though we did not see what he turns into. According to Studio Series, it's a Cybertronian tank. Now you may be wondering what evidence do I have to claim that protoforms born by the Energon womb did not develop a developed structure. Well, I have three reasons. First off, all the protoforms that we saw throughout the films never developed out of their protoform stage, unless they scanned a vehicle. Like the Silverado protoform, Police Cruiser protoform, Garbage Truck protoform, and the one protoform launching a pillar. Second, each variant's color scheme is all uniform. Though from time to time, some hatchlings can appear green and white. The cause of this is unknown, and it seems to affect a Cybertronian throughout its life since it affected the garbage truck protoform who is likely Onslaught. Instead of being gray like the rest, he's green and white just like those hatchlings. Though this color scheme could be due to him having a Cybertronian vehicle form, we don't see any parts to indicate that. So I would have to say that he suffered from the same thing those hatchlings had. But my third and final reason on why artificially born protoforms do not have a DS is because they need to ride around in vehicles as a means of transport. If you remember, not having a DS means not having a Cybertronian vehicle mode. So to counteract this, the cons would need to construct fighter ships along with mother ships to house those fighter ships for their protoforms. This is further backed up since there's a variant of Decepticon protoform that's dedicated to managing the mother ship. 
those being the Mothership crew protoforms, and their unique design only shows up on the Mothership. One even puts their arms up to signal a incoming fighter. This can explain why the majority of Decepticon protoforms decided not to scan alt modes, since they preferred and were accustomed to using fighter ships instead of a traditional vehicle mode. So with that said, if these protoforms did indeed have a Cybertronian vehicle form, then there would be no need for the ships. Even when Bumblebee was asked if he could fly one, he said so-so, since there would be no need for him to fly one besides testing purposes, since he already had a functioning Cybertronian vehicle form, like all the other Cybertronians that were naturally born. Now, let's move on to Cybertronians that were built. Now, though we do not know what percent of the Cybertronian race was built, we know for a fact that Optimus Prime was built, due to Lockdown and Quintessa stating that he was. The creators. They don't like it. They built you to do what you were told. I made you. You are mine to command. At the end of the day, Optimus was able to function like a normal born Cybertronian, even though he was built. Another character that likely was built was Devcon, due to his unique design, since no other Transformer is quite like him. He even has these giant feet that can crush Autobots and a gun that can obliterate anything in its path. He's clearly a weapon of war, and though we never saw him transform, we can clearly see he has tires from his Russian missile launcher alt mode, so we know for a fact that he can. I also think that Soundwave's minions were built as well, since they all serve a specific purpose. Laserbeak is the perfect spy since he can transform into a plethora of alt modes, and even imitate others. Wheelie was built for surveillance to monitor though at Wiki Household, and ultimately still the Shard. Scalpel was clearly made to be a doctor unit, and this gets reinforced in Dark of the Moon since multiple of him show up to fix Megatron. Alice was made to impersonate humans for the Decepticon's benefit, and lastly Frenzy, Ravage, and Reedman were clearly smash and grabbers who would do anything to get the intel or item they needed. There is a good chance that the Constructicons were built to serve as the Decepticons' construction force, especially Hightower, Overload, Scavenger, and Demolisher, due to their size alone. This can also explain why some of them were cloned and appeared in Revenge of the Fallen. And lastly, the big hatchets that we see in Dark of the Moon, which I like to call barrage units. Due to their massive size alone, they were likely built to destroy Autobot bases. Now, the reason why I said these massive characters were likely built is because the biggest protoform that we ever saw in the films was the one that Optimus slaughters right before he kills Shockwave. Now, in the shot, Optimus does appear to be bigger than it, but you gotta keep in mind that the protoform is crouching a bit. So at full height, he would be around 35 feet tall, which is the same size as Megatron. And since 35 feet seems to be the height cap for the majority of Transformers, it's safe to say that anyone bigger was likely built. Protoforms don't appear to come in sizes under 15 feet which is the same size as Jazz, which means RC, Chromia, Alita 1, and the Twins could have been built. You could say that Scorponok was also built, but I think he's a rare exception, since some Transformers are born with Minicon partners, proven by the fact that Scorponok is integrated inside of Blackout. Another example of this would be Hugger. It wouldn't make sense for just the steering wheel to become a Transformer, since we clearly see the AllSpark energy go under the vehicle. And though the energy did not flow over it like in Dispensers and Xbot's case, the wheel still comes to life. So it would make sense for the Cadillac to come to life as well. And with all that said, that should cover all misconceptions about Cybertronians born or built. But now let's move on to why the protoforms in Transformers 2007 look drastically different in the sequels. And that's because originally Autobot and Decepticon protoforms shared the same design, until they were reckoned to have a distinct Autobot and Decepticon version. Since we're on the topic of Transformers 2007, as for why the Autobots showed up as protoforms instead of being in their DS forms, is because when a Transformer enters their transition form, they shed their parts all the way down to their protoforms, to better resemble a comet. When traveling the galaxy, the transition form picks up a coating of space dust and debris. This rocky material forms a rough crust over the Transformer to complete the meteor disguise better. We saw this stuff burn off of the transition forms in Transformers 2007 and Revenge of the Fallen. As for which Autobot landed where, Jazz landed in the baseball stadium, where he would end up finding a car dealership nearby, scanning his favorite car. 
Ironhide landed in a suburban pool. After climbing out and being asked if he was the Tooth Fairy, he quickly hid behind some trees when the child's parents exited the house. He would end up scanning the family's truck. Ratchet Crash landed into a street and bounced into a storefront, where he would scan a nearby Hummer H2 rescue vehicle. Lastly, Optimus Prime landed in a field, where he made his way to a highway and scanned a passing truck. Now, you may be wondering why Megatron was not a protoform when he crash landed on Earth. And that's because Transformers, who have the ability of flight, do not need to go into their transition forms when leaving a planet. In Transformers 2007, Starscream was able to leave Earth as an F-22 Raptor. Megatron in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen was able to fly out of Earth's atmosphere, along with Optimus Prime in Age of Extinction. With that squared off, let's move on to why Blackout and Grinder have the same head design as a protoform. And that's because the design team decided to use their head designs for the protoforms. And though they do look similar, Blackout and Grinders are slightly bulkier due to the helicopter parts while the protoforms are more streamlined. But for an in-universe answer to this, I believe Blackout and Grindor kept a protoform head design as a symbol of patriotism, basically bearing the skull of the Decepticon faction, showing that they would serve it till their dying breath. Another question many have asked is how come the Decepticon protoform showed up in the last night? Well, if you think about it, it's likely that not all Decepticon protoforms were able to abandon Cybertron. So eventually, when Quintessa came and started fixing up the planet, they took notice and joined forces with her. Eventually, when Megatron showed up, they were eager to fight alongside their master once again. Now, let's move on to the second to last part of the video. That being protoform variants and weaponry. The original and oldest protoform variant would be the Dynasty of the Primes, which includes the original seven primes. Little is known about them and they all came in several configurations that made them all look unique. It is unknown if they could even transform, but what is known is that all of them died out for some time besides the Fallen, but he would ultimately end up getting killed by Optimus. The second iteration of protoform that would come would be the Autobot and Decepticon ones. Though the Autobot ones did not appear to have variants, the Decepticon ones sure did, with the most common variant having and not having spikes on their backs along with their faces, Dark of the Moon introduced the Mothership crew, which does have a spiky variant that serves as ground soldiers, long-haul body-type protoforms that serve as Decepticon heavies, a brand new brute protoform that is seen walking in a Mothership and launching a pillar, and interestingly enough is the only one that has a concept art, and a new set of animalistic protoforms that appear to be a hybrid between the most common protoforms and the dreads, now, the Dreads are also a form of Decepticon protoform, that being the Dread protoform. Since besides Crankcase Crowbar and Hatchet, Dreadbot, who shares the same protoform type as Crowbar, appears in Transformers The Last Night, alongside Berserker, who shares the same protoform type as Crankcase. And lastly, the Barrage units that we see in Dark of the Moon, which were obviously modified and upscaled from the same protoform type as Hatchet. Another Dread sharing the same protoform type as Hatchet was Pitched, but never made it into the last night. As for weaponry, the most common protoforms either had dual miniguns or a blaster, with the blaster design getting updated for Dark of the Moon. The Dreads also use these updated blaster weapons, but unique to them, they have spike bomb weapons that come out of their backs. And as for the animalistic protoforms, they use a giant rifle. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about before I end off the video is that all Transformers have Cybertronian markings on them. Autobot protoforms have it on their arms, while the Decepticon protoforms have it on their toes. Prime on his cheeks and ears, Shockwave on his sword, Sentinel on his helmet, Megatron on his helmet, Hound on his guns, Skids on his ear and a Mudflap on his eyelid, Drift on his swords, Grimlock on his cheek, horns, and lower jaw, and Hot Rod on his fingers. Now, those are just a handful that I know of, but I'm positive all Transformers have them. And they really just end up randomly on their robot modes, which I find really cool. And just like that, that was Protoform Misconceptions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. 
Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.